Hey guys, good evening and welcome to a, another episode of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments with me, your host, Richard Bexon. Today, we're going to be talking to Melanie Engel. Melanie is the broker and owner of Flamingo Beach Realty up in Northern Guanacaste. She's been a realtor for over seven years here in Costa Rica and a business entrepreneur for over 30 years. So we're going to be getting the lowdown on what's happening in Northern Guanacaste at the moment. It's been a while since we got an update. Uh, remember, guys, if you have any questions for Melanie, all of her contact details will be in the description. Uh, remember to subscribe, add comments, um, and give us some likes on Apple and also Spotify so we can get the word out there, guys. Also, we're going to be launching a brand new website soon, uh, everyone, called investingcostarica.com, where we'll cover basically guides and information on everything from real estate to vacation rentals to building, to construction, to permitting, to investing into funds, tourism bonds, a variety of different stuff. Basically ways to invest here in Costa Rica. So that's investingcostarica.com. I think we'll probably be out by the end of September uh, and we will let you know. Remember, if you have any questions, guys, you can feel free to email me at info at investingcostarica.com. Also, something I wanted to point out, um, one of the listeners pointed out the other day, they asked me why I was doing this stuff. Um, and well, I mean, there are two reasons. Number one, to get all the information out there. And secondly, actually, people do hire me when they look to make an investment here in Costa Rica, whether they are not too sure where to make the investment um, or they know, but they want some help kind of choosing the right thing to rent. Um, as you guys may know, I'm one of the owners of Costa Rica's largest luxury travel company, uh, actually Central America's largest travel company. Uh, so we have all this data of what's renting, what's not, uh, what are the nightly rates, what you can do to really maximize your revenue. But I thought I'd throw that out there because uh, Joe uh, from Camarindo had mentioned it to me and I thought it would be, uh, it, it but he was like, you should tell everybody uh, on the podcast. So I thought I'd do that. Anyway, enough of the intro. Let's get straight into it with Melanie. Good evening, Melanie. How are you doing? I'm fabulous. Thank you very much. Fantastic. I really appreciate you taking the time for, to be on the podcast this evening. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> I know that you've been pretty busy recently. It's been a crazy year, right? It's been a lot of fun and a lot of out long hours, but we're helping a lot of people. And so that's what makes it so awesome. Awesome. Well, maybe we'll get a bit of respite in September and October and then back, you know, it'll, it'll uh, take off again, probably as we move into November, December onwards. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, again, as I just mentioned there, it's been a crazy year, but I mean, I always like to ask people like, what has surprised you recently and why? What surprised me is how much COVID has affected our market and how fast it's moving now and how much it's increased. Um, and people are buying by video only. So there's people that have never even been to Costa Rica before that are dropping half a million American dollars um, through the trust of me with my I thought my iPhone just literally showing them what the property looks like and driving down the street and showing them what the street looks like, showing them the grocery store, showing them life here. And um, they're buying property here. For me, that sounds crazy, Melanie. You know, the idea of buying something without looking at, but maybe that, you know, maybe half a million dollars for these people that it's just not that much of a deal. So no, when you ask me what surprised me, it's regular people. It's people that are like teachers, construction workers, government employees, those are the type of people that are buying properties wow. sight unseen. And like I said, some of them have never even been to Costa Rica before, but they're just so fed up with life in North America yep. that they just want to get away from the politics, the drama, the racism, yep. the COVID issues, and just come and experience peace, relaxation, and paradise here in Costa Rica. Well, we have enough of that here, don't we? So there's enough to go around. We sure do. So, well, you're, you're based in the Flamingo area. I mean, just for people that are listening in, you know, who probably don't really have any idea and can't get on a virtual tour with you uh, to look at a property. Tell us about this area, kind of what going, what's going on, what does it offer people that are looking to invest there? Sure, absolutely. Well, Flamingo is located in the north um, side of, of Costa Rica. We call it Guanacaste area or the Gold Coast area. And what's great about this area is the beaches. Within a couple of minutes, you can be at multiple different beaches. And what's amazing is some are great for surfing, some are boogie boarding, some are swimming. Some are great for walks, some are awesome for at low tides to find the sea, sea um, starfish, sea cucumbers, things like that. Oh. So it's super cool that we're in a great area with lots of beaches. There's also a lot of mountains nearby. So you can go for great hikes and biking trails. And then we are a couple hours away from 
you know, the cloud rainforest and the volcanoes. So there's a lot of outdoor activities and adventures to be had here. Um, what I love about living in this area is really the Pura Vida of it all. It's a very like relaxed, happy environment. And even when you have a stressful day here, you literally can watch the hummingbirds or watch the little ants carrying the leaves, or you can just run into the water, take a dip in the water, or, you know, go for a walk along the beach and just really reset and just remember what life is all about and just enjoy um, paradise here. I agree. I mean, I think North, that northern part of Guanacaste they probably has some of the nicest beaches in the country and being so close to the Liberia airport as well. I mean, you guys are what, like an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes from the airport? We're 45 minutes to an hour from the airport here in Flamingo. Oh. Even up at Coco, you're like 30 minutes away. Um, so I love that there's enough infrastructure. Like we've got main roads. You've got tons of fa fabulous restaurants, you know, awesome schools or seven private schools within 30 minutes. There's lots of activities for kids to do here. We have a lot of infrastructure, um, yet it's really like, you know, there's one road in and one road out. And if it's traffic, it's because there's horses on the road or cows on the road or a lady pushing a stroller or somebody riding a bike or somebody just stopping their car to talk to, you know, someone that they, their neighbor or somebody they saw on the side of the road. Um, so it's a kind of a combination of there's enough infrastructure, yet there's enough, um, you know, 1950s, as I call it, yep. you know, take, take it back, you know, a few notches here. Well, let's talk about the real estate in the area, just for anybody that's listening in here. I mean, in Flamingo, you know, and I know the answer to this question, but, but we can kind of expand on it a bit. I mean, how much are you looking at for a three bedroom condo in Flamingo at the moment? So because of COVID and because our huge demand, we're finding the inventory is shrinking at an extremely rapid rate. Um, right now, you're lucky if you can find a two bedroom condo, there's I think one for 350, there's a couple for 450. But if you were asking me for a three bedroom now, they're all over a million dollars. And so our market has just um, skyrocketed and we're just not getting the inventory back to replace it. You know, if you ask me maybe for Tamarindo, um, you know, maybe we're looking at 400,000 up to 600,000 if you want an ocean view three bedroom condo. And if you're looking for something cheaper, you know, maybe we have to go to the outskirts of Potrero or have to look in Coco and Hermosa. So certainly there is something for everybody's budget, but it's just uh, where I'm finding the inventory is getting less and less. And nobody has a crystal ball, but my expectation is, is that come even September and October, it's going to be even more people coming here once winter sets in. Yep. Um, and if COVID continues the way it is and, you know, masks and stuff start coming back, people are going to be like, get me out of here. Um, and I expect, you know, stuff to even be properties to be moving faster. Yeah. I mean, it's really going to be a demand supply. I mean, we're going to have, a, we already have a supply issue. I'm saying it's good. We, like we already are having it. I mean, we can see it all over the country. Um, but I mean, Flamingo with the marina coming in, there's a lot of speculation happening, but I mean, you guys have amazing views up there. I mean, if you've got a condo up there with ocean view, I mean, that's going to be one of the best ocean views in the country. Absolutely. And that's great that you're talking about the Flamingo Marina. It's supposed to open first quarter of next year with 91 boat slips. It's going to have 181 boat slips overall, but we are ahead of schedule and uh, they're opening next quarter. And wow. it's really exciting to see the construction happening. They're building the commercial centers right now. And I've been told today that they're planning to open with bars and restaurants and shops with first quarter next year. And as well with all the boats coming in and historically when marinas come in, you know, that, that increases the value of properties. And no one, again, is promising that, but that's historically what happens. And the demand that we're seeing now, I believe is COVID related, not marina related. And yeah. I believe that once that marina comes in and opens up, bang, all of the even higher end properties are going to be um, in, in demand as, you know, people that have boats tend to, you know, be luxury clients and are look, gonna be looking for the higher end condos and homes. So, I mean, talking about, I mean, in the area or the listings that you have at the moment, of the listings that you have, or maybe a listing you don't have, I don't know, which would you personally buy and why, Melanie? There is two of my listings that are my, my favorites right now. Okay. Um, the first one hasn't even hit the market. It's a Corral penthouse in Reserva Conchal. Yep. Reserva Conchal is um, a gated community, a luxury gated community that has a PGA golf course, tennis courts, um, stand-up paddle boards, kayaks, bikes, hiking and biking trails, 13 bars and restaurants, and it's located on what's voted the number one beach in Costa Rica, Playa Conchal. And there's an ocean view penthouse, which is gorgeous furniture, outstanding artwork, and incredible views. And that's coming on the market at 939, 939,000. That would be my my number one how many, pick. How many bedrooms is that one? Is that a three bedroom? Three bed, three bedroom, three and a half bath. Wow. 2,678 square feet. I think that's a good price for square square to be honest with yes. you. And then my second pick 
um, is Hacienda Panilla. It's a house called Casa de Moana. And it's a really cool house in that it's a beachy, it's a beach house. And they live with a house completely open all the time. Like they leave all the doors and all the windows completely open. And what's awesome is like, you don't really see a lot of bugs or anything coming in. And they have an incredible backyard with this great palm trees with tons of fresh coconut. And it's really, um, it's like a tropical oasis back there. Mm -hmm. And I really love that feeling like you are away somewhere tropical. So, and that one is 1.2 million and it's a four bedroom house with a maid's quarter. And uh, that's sort of my, and it's on a half an acre. So that's sort of my second pick. Wow. In, in which um, community is it in Hacienda Panilla? That one is in Reserva de Golf. And yep. in, in Hacienda Panilla, what's awesome about Hacienda Panilla is they too, like Reserva Concha, have a beach club, have hiking and biking trails, have a golf course you know, have a um, great sense of community where they have different activities going on, you know, so you get to meet your neighbors and get to hang out with those around you. Yeah, I agree. I was in Hacienda Panilla last week and every time I go there, I'm like, I like it even more and more. So, yeah. And if you're a surfer, it's the best place to surf. True. Very, very true. I constantly talk on the podcast about Playa Avianas to Playa Negra area because I'm like, I think that's the next area that could potentially see quite a bit of development. Could be blowing so. up. What do you think is the best deal at the moment that you have in your listings? I have two again. Okay. Um, my first one is called Casa Oasis. It's under construction. It's going to be finished in a couple of months. It's a four bedroom, three bath home that comes fully furnished with a pool, garage, completely landscaped. And it's about a two or three minute walk to um, Potrero Beach. And it is beautiful um i love the way they've designed it i love the way they built the house and it's affordable at five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars four bedroom wow. three bath and great walk to the beach and you can walk to all the restaurants and the brewery and all the nightlife as well from there i like that price uh, i like that price tag and my second pick is casa ranchi which is a brand new finished home that's in a community called um, rancho via real it's sort of central. It's a little bit more inland. It's maybe 10 minutes to get to, to different beaches. So it's maybe 10 minutes to play. I'll be honest, like you talked about 10 minutes to Tamarindo, 10 minutes to Ponchal. And what I love about that home is really the um, tropical modern look of it. So it, they've used, you know, concrete and a lot of Guanacaste wood and, you know, outdoor shower feel. And they've done an amazing job at landscaping and created an outdoor palapa and an outdoor barbecue and everything's lit up at night. And that's a three bedroom, two bath home for 549000 Wow. So again, yeah. in that more affordable range. I, I, that sounds like a great location that's very close again to Tamarindo, close to schools as well, uh, and also over there to play, play Aviana. So I'm sure that probably mm -hmm. won't, won't be on your listings for much longer, I'm sure. So uh, I agree. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's, you know, I was reading some uh, your bio on your website here, and it sounds like you guys have some experience in building. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, we built our home, and we're about to embark on another build. Wow. What? Like, I mean, I think we're about to probably see more of this just because, again, I mean, as demand starts to, you know, there's not so much supply, demand is there, people are going to be like, okay, I'm not able to get what it is that I want. And when the option to build comes along, you know, it's like, you know, some people like to do it, some people don't. But I mean, what advice would you give to anyone looking to build in Costa Rica? Yes, I think it's really important that you get a referral for a reputable builder. Um, our first experience was a complete nightmare. And, um, you know, had we gone around town and asked about him, we would have found that out about him. And so it's really important to, to ask around, um, ask them for a list of their clients and phone numbers and literally call those clients and ask them what worked, what didn't, were they on time, were they on budget, did they do what they delivered? Um, second thing I would do, and I probably would do that if I'm here or not here, is I would hire an independent person, either an architect or an engineer to come in and sort of take a look at the project every week or two and report back to you with pictures. Are they doing what they're supposed to? Because our builder skimped us on a lot of things that we couldn't see. Like he put the wrong size septic tank or he pulled the wrong electrical wires in our house. And, yep. you know, we spent a lot of money having to fix our house, but had we had somebody, you know, watching over, we could have, that could have been prevented. So I think it's worth that investment to have an independent person looking at it, looking at the house for you. I agree. I've talked enough on the podcast about kind of separating concerns in any transaction that you're going to do here of just making sure, again, that the architect to the engineer aren't kind of in the same boat together and then the construction guy as well, because that's where things can go awry. So it's really good to always have like a third party kind of just checking, you know, trust but verify, as I like to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I think that's great advice. Yeah. I mean, what is the biggest mistake that you see that people make looking to buy here in Costa Rica, buy real estate? I think that um, 
when, when clients just jump around between realtors, yep. um, I think that's a mistake. I think that it's better to spend that time. You would have been jumping, researching the, the different realtors, talk to people on the phone ahead of time, and then pick one. That's going to be your buyer's agent. We do not have an MLS in Costa Rica. And so ask that agent, for example, do you just show your properties or do you show all the properties? Uh, for me, it's important that my clients get exactly what they're looking for. So I show everybody's properties and it doesn't matter what the commission is structure is for those properties. I want to make sure that I have a happy client. Um, do your research, check out their Google reviews, see how many five-star reviews do they have? What do people have to say about them? Um, and then you can even ask the agent for references as well, because it's an important decision and you're investing a lot of money. You want to make sure that somebody's going to be having your back going to introduce you to good lawyers, introduce you to good architects, good interior designers, someone that's going to kind of take care of you uh, and be there when you get here too. So we'll tell you like, where do you get your hair done? How do I get a bank account set up? <laughs> like, where do I buy balsamic vinegar? You know, for example. Um, so you want to find someone that you feel uh, comfortable with, someone that's going to have your back, someone that knows the market, that does this full time. You know, there's, there's many people that call themselves real estate agents here, but not everyone actually sells and knows the market. So yep. make sure you get someone that's a professional that knows what they're doing. Um, take a look at their track record and really find someone that's going to help you throughout the process. I agree. I mean, I think the one thing that people are astounded by is that really anyone can become a realtor here in Costa Rica. You just kind of just roll up. So, you know, I think it's really important to look for someone that's established references. I think the Google reviews is great as well. Um, and have those conversations with multiple people and do ask that question. Do you sell other people's listings as well? Like, or are you only pushing your exclusive ones? Because I think if you mm -hmm. are, potentially you're not doing the right thing by your client. So Correct. I completely agree. So uh, last question for you. Uh, if you inherited $500,000 and you had to invest it either into a business or into real estate here in Costa Rica, what would you do with it and why? I would buy a couple of condos or I would buy a house for that amount of money. Probably I, it either would have to be view condos or close to the beach. And for sure for the house, like that, I told you one of my favorite listings is my four bedroom house because you can fit a lot of people in there and you can make a lot of, a lot of money that way. And yeah. I think that um, the way the market's going, I believe that it's going to increase in value. So I think my capital will be held well, and I think I can make money on, on, you know, doing the rentals. So. I, I agree. I, I think that sometimes people don't understand is that like, again, getting a third or a fourth or a fifth bedroom just, you know, really helps on the rental side, just because, you know, the market is kind of somewhat, I say saturated, maybe it's not the word, but like there's a lot of two bedroom condos, but there's not that many three, then less four, then less five, et cetera, et cetera. That's right. And we're finding that people are traveling together, either with friends or with generations. Yep. So kind of like a magic number, you know, I've, I've heard some property managers say is if you can sleep 14, Yep. you got it made. So with a four bedroom, get a couple of bunk beds in there, get a pillow couch in there, just find a way that you can, um, you know, increase the, the people count. And we have an eight bedroom villa in Guanaca in, in Playa del Coco, in the hills above Coco. Um, and yeah, we can fit, it'll push 24, but I would only like to say 21 people. So uh, mm -hmm. and it stays pretty full. So but. amazing. Well, Melanie, thank you very much for your time. This has been great. And I think Again, anyone that wants to contact Melanie, I'm going to put all of her contact details uh, in the description here. Uh, as you can see, she has a wealth of knowledge. Uh, she's a real specialist in that northern Guanacaste area. So reach out to her uh, if you guys want to. Um, and again, every, all the details will be in here. And I really appreciate your time, Melanie. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. And if anybody has any questions about anything, I'm happy to just jump on a call with them. Or if they want to check out my YouTube channel and watch different properties or anything like that, you know, we're, we're happy to always keep sharing information and, and teaching people why we, why we love this area so much. Awesome. Have a good one, Melanie. Thank you. Bye. Bye.